Okay, what we've got here is a AC dual action from a 37 Packard 12 cylinder. The number is stamped right in here. 1521778. If you were to order a kit, do you want to do this at home? That's the number you'd give when you called. Now the customer sent this in, missing this dome, the bowl, and the bale. But they left this nut in here. The uh, Packard 12 pump is one of the only pumps that I'll actually paint. These come through from the factory painted uh, um, a shade of black. It's not, I think it's called semi-gloss. Pretty sure that's what it said, semi-gloss black. But that's what I use. I cover these, paint them all up after they've been cleaned. Anyway, if you're doing this at home, clamp it in the vise by one of these ears. It's pretty tough on these ones here, so you have to be real careful. Unless you have a uh, some kind of a jig that you can bolt to it. And mount it up high. We want to mark the orientation of the top casting to the bottom ca uh, body casting. Somewhere around here, I think the customer's already done it, or a previous rebuilder's already done it. Just make a mark. You could take a, a hacksaw and just scrap, sc scratch between the top and the and the bottom here. Uh, take a picture of it, draw a picture of it, do whatever you have to do because you want this to go back on the exact same way it was. If you say, yeah, but I'm going to do it all at once, if you run into something where you have to put this aside, like life gets in the way, um, two months down the road, you're not going to remember how this went. So just mark it. It's easy. It only takes a second. Remove these four screws. This is the vacuum side. Remove these four screws and there'll be a screen and a gasket underneath it. Yeah, we'll do this, make this a little quicker. There's a screen and there's pieces of the gasket. You're not going to use any of that over again. So if you're doing this at home and you have a kit, just match up all the parts. Now we want to take out these ten screws here. Take out nine of them and hang on to the last one because uh, there's a pretty hefty spring underneath here. That if this is stuck, which it usually is, and you remove that and turn your head away, it'll, it'll get unstuck and send it to the moon. Okay, here we go with the last one. And so far it's stuck down there. To give you an idea of what happens. I'm not going to let it go to the moon because I don't want to do that. No screws holding it down, but yet it's stuck. Keep your hand over the top. Put a putty knife in between the two pieces, a few taps. That's the spring that's in between there, and it's, well, it's down to this height. So it's got a lot of pressure underneath it, as you saw when it let go. These your inlet and outlet valves for the vacuum side. And your diaphragm, it's a quarter turn. To unlock it out of these two, these two um, notches. And takes it off of the link. Take that nut off. 
and you, with this particular one, nothing, the, um, the diaphragm assemblies don't come staked. They're, uh, they're just diaphragm material because everything is bolted together. Flip it over. And we want to work on this fuel side. Now just like the other side, we want to mark the orientation of it. The top cover in relation to the, actually it's the inlet and outlet in relation to the body. We want it to go back on the same way. Make sure your mark is somewhere on there. <coughs> Remove the ten screws. The spring on this one here is underneath the diaphragm as opposed to the vacuum side that was sitting on top of it. So that the, uh, the, this casting isn't going to jump as far. But it, it still might come up a little bit. So you can go around and remove all the screws. One thing I failed to tell you, take these out before you take all the screws out. It's a lot easier when it's supported by one of the ears. And you'll find a little spring down inside of here. You can see over the years, people have taken this spring and stretched it out to try to solve a problem when rebuilding it would have done it. Take out the last screw and just like the other side this one's stuck too. See this doesn't jump up as far. Now down inside, once you get these two out and you get the two springs out, down inside you'll see the valves. This one here has already been taken out, but that's what the uh, inlet valve looks like. And there's a spring that sits on top of it. And I think what I'll do is I'll wash these first in the, uh, in the tank and get some of the grunge off it. Again, this is like the other side. You just want to turn it and it'll unlock it. Here's the pull rod. Now there's a seal, a leather seal that's down inside of here. I'll show you in a second. That rides on this. And obviously the seal's been gone for a while. As it's, uh, we got a lot of rust in here. There's the spring in the spring seat. And they said, like so. And, oh yeah, the seal's long gone. It's all chewed up. There's a leather seal that sits in here. Keeps oil from coming up underneath this diaphragm. And I don't know for what reason why the, the uh, that seal is gone, but that's all that's left of it. It's pure dust. And this is going to take a trip to the wash tank, too. Let's get these valves out of the vacuum side. This will take a small screwdriver for these. And I got one that uh, fits them perfect. Take out these four screws. They're little short ones. Be careful you don't drop them. I don't think you can get those at a hardware store. Remove the four screws and underneath it you'll find there's a gasket. Which you get in a kit. This is the seat that that valve, one of the valves sits on is right in here. As you can see, it's all dirty. So it probably wasn't, uh, it wasn't working very good on the, for the vacuum. This is just a spring seat. It sits down. You 
see that spring is a lot shorter than the one I took out of the fuel side. Only because there's not enough room in there. Down the side you'll find a valve. On the other side is a valve. And a spring stuck to the bottom of it. You're not going to use any of those parts over again. And where I'm going to be cleaning this thing in a solvent tank, I like to put, and plus it's going to go through the glass beater, I like to put these screws back in here to keep any of the uh, any of the glass from going down inside and plugging up these holes making it difficult to put the screw back in when they're all done and there's the seat area for one of the valves right here and this is where the the spring sits in there, then the valve sits on top of it, and then that that brass cover sits on top of that. And we want to remove the washer that goes underneath this. It's a paper washer. You need to get a new one. And sometimes on these on the fancy packets. This nut is chrome plated. And I don't think this one is. But I'll wash it just to make sure. <coughs> now I'll gather up all the parts and we'll uh, we'll put it back together after it's all done. Stay tuned. Okay, everything's uh, cleaned up and painted. Surfaces are all flat. It's all like it should be. I, uh, before you put this diaphragm in that I didn't put together yet. It's the new it's the new seal in there, the new leather seal. When you get these in the kit, they're uh, they're a little small and they're hard to put on there. So what I do is I take my Dremel tool with a uh, like a pointed bit on it and just run it around inside to open that up a little bit. Just so that it slides, it slides on this pull rod, which is the one that's going to go through that. That sits right in there. And in a second, I'll put this all together and we'll see what it's supposed to look like. It's a pretty straightforward how to assemble this. The small plate goes on first. Make sure that that copper washer is in there. Put your diaphragm on. The next larger plate. The octagonal washer, the lock washer, and the nut. And we're gonna we're gonna snug this up. So that it's ready to go in there. Don't overkill it. Tighten it up so it doesn't move. Get your spring. Spring seat. Start it through going a long way. Now flip it over so that you can see it coming through. And we want to 
line it up so that it goes right in there. And the holes will line up with the screw holes in the body. Set that aside. And we'll handle the vacuum side. Now after you get your, the four little screws out of the way, if you put them in, we're going to make sure that the seat area is nice and clean. If you have a, uh, an easiest thing to do is be to get a dowel, a wooden dowel, and put a uh, piece of sandpaper in the center of it. And just set it down on it. A couple of spins will clean it up. Same thing with this plate. Anywhere that the valve is going to sit, you want to make sure that it's nice and clean and flat. Once you get that in there, then we're going to put a valve. Find the two smallest springs. This isn't uh, good for somebody with fat fingers or shaky hands. Get that spring in there, set the valve on top of it, and Remember this retainer. It's, it's just you're working with such small stuff here. See, I didn't have to show you all this misery that I'm going through, but I thought I'd do it anyway. Put the gasket on, lining up the holes. Now this is where you got to be. I'm going to drop this on here. I'm going to push it down at the same time so that it sits and keep your fat fingers out of the way. Not bad. I got it right the first time. Sometimes it'll jump off the side, the valve will tip over, the spring will tip over. Keep at it, you'll get it. Put the four screws in, tighten them down. the exciting part of the video. Just be patient. Make sure these go down good and tight. But also remember that they uh, they're only I think 632 screws. And they're going into cast aluminum so you don't want to strip them. You want to test it? You can test this one. The other one goes into into air so next we want to put this put the screen on. Why we want to filter the air I don't know but put the gasket on, stick the screws through it and it holds it. Snug them down. Pull them down even, that way you won't bend anything.
no overkill here. That um, that cork gasket is pretty forgiving. Now you'll be able to test this one here now that this area is closed off. Huh? And it works fine. You should be able to suck air out and not blow any air in. And then with this one here you should be able to suck air huh? out and not blow any air in. If, if I said that wrong then you know what I mean. Next is the fuel section. Get that dowel out again. We gotta surface these two seats in here. Just go around till you see it's nice and shiny. That way you know you got all all the way around. Another area is this here. Make sure it's nice and flat. Take a flat file and go over it. I have a tool that I made for it. Makes it nice and clean. Make sure there's no gaskets stuck around in here. Now, we're going to put a valve in. Let's do this one here first. Drop it in, and if you're lucky, it'll sit down on the first try. Otherwise, stick something up from underneath. Poke around, and you'll get it to sit down flat. With the gasket on. This wasn't chrome plated, by the way. Now, if the customer might have one that is, the spring's going to sit right in there. Just be careful with it. And snug it down. Now this one here I gotta find a gotta pick up a dome for it. Okay, you wanna drop the next valve in. Right, I'm getting good at that. Another one, snug it down. This part's complete, with the exception of the filter screen, the gasket, the bale, and the bowl, which the customer didn't send with it. But we're ready. We're ready to put the fuel section on. Just find your reference mark that you made when you, before you took it apart. Now these ones usually come with chrome screws. They usually have a chrome dome and a chrome nut. But unless the customer took them off before sending it in so that it wouldn't get destroyed, this is what they're getting back. Stick all the screws in, get them, run them down about halfway, don't tighten them up. Once you get all these screws down, there's still room left here. What we want to do is put something on the arm to use as leverage. Pull it all the way up until it stops. Now you can tighten down the screws. 
you're preloading the diaphragm, making it so that it'll last longer, it won't stretch. Sometimes if you uh, if you don't preload it, you can end up with uh, a lot of fuel pressure. Once you get four of them done, you can release the pressure off of that. And then go around and tighten the rest of them down. A quick way to do a, a sort of a half ass test. With the arm relaxed, if the bowl was on head, hold your finger over the inlet, pull the arm up, and check the outlet, pull the arm up, block off the outlet, and let the arm go. That'll tell you that everything is sealed. The bowl is sealed. It's sealed in here. And the plates. And now we're going to go to the back inside. Kind of the same idea as the other one. This has a big washer on the bottom, but it also has that copper washer on it. Make sure that goes on first. The next size plate, the diaphragm, the big plate, another octagonal washer, lock washer, and a nut. And we want to make it so that these two are in the middle of this. As this goes across, we want to make it the same as that. That way it'll go together right. Okay, before we put that on, I want to show you what the links look like inside. This is what we're keying into. Those two slots. It's going to go in and turn to lock it in. Seeing as how you're sitting it this way, the only way to do this is to move the arm down and you can hook it in. Now we gotta put this killer spring back on. This spring goes with the wide side, you know, it's different sizes. The wide part goes up inside there. So we put that on. Find your reference mark so that you get it clocked in the right position. Get a couple of screws caught. And this is kind of tricky because as you're pushing this down, see how the diaphragm's going up? It's going to push it even more so the you know, almost the diaphragm almost disappears. What I do is I catch one of them and run the screw about halfway down. And before you do the other one, push the arm so that it lifts the diaphragm up and catches the screw. And then get it cut. Now look around the edge and see where the diaphragm got pulled in and got stuck behind this casting. It's real common, especially with this type of a on this type of pump. The ones that, are, that you can see go straight through, run them in. Just run them halfway down or a few threads so that they're caught. Just so that it doesn't pull that that part of the diaphragm back in again. Another way to be sure that that's the diaphragm doesn't get stuck in there is use your third arm and push that diaphragm that uh, the arm down and it'll push the diaphragm out. 
so that it's not caught anywhere like that. And the screws in. Now the vacuum diaphragm wants to be set in a neutral position. You want that diaphragm to be flat. And you can tell that it's flat as you just watch around the edge. Watch the diaphragm. Once all these screws are all tightened down, you can do a, uh, a test to make sure the vacuum side's working. Again, using the leverage from the with the adjustable wrench. Work that arm up and down, check for pressure, check for suction. If everything works right and you can feel it, then you know this seal is good. The seal around here is good, and the seal for the plates is good. Now, aside from the bowl, this pump's ready. Now, all this needs is a gasket. It's ready to put back on the car. Hopefully, the customer's got a nice chrome-plated nut and a and a dome and some chrome screws. I think this look pretty nice on the car. Well, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget the little notification bell right above that. And one thing I keep forgetting to mention is on these fittings, anywhere that there's a fitting going into this, using a brass fitting, if you feel like you have to seal it, do not use Teflon tape. The Teflon tape tends to shred and it gets stuck in the valves. I can't tell you how many pumps I've done with that piece of that Teflon tape is stuck in there. Use Teflon paste. It's available at any hardware store. Well, I hope this video helped you. If you're doing this at home and you have any problems, don't hesitate to drop me a line. Leave a message on here. I usually get it pretty quick and I reply pretty quick. Otherwise, in order to get a hold, in order to get a hold of us, if you'd like to order a kit. Don't forget the number that's stamped on the flange. Give that along with the application to whoever answers the phone. <clears throat> you can get us at 781-335-8860 or on the web at then-now.com. And if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell. To let you know that next time I put up another video, which usually be pretty quick. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching.